Hello everyone, and welcome back to Fractal 101. My name is Alex. Thank you so much for watching this video. Our topic for today, lead boosting. It's super imperative to have an ability to boost any of your tones, whether it's a super saturated, overdriven tone, or it's a clean, just for a funky part that needs to stand out in a mix. It's also important to be able to dial that back when, say, another soloist comes in, or maybe a vocalist comes back in and you don't want to disappear from the mix for the rest of the night. We've got you covered in this quick little rundown on lead boosting. For this example, our preset is rather simple. We have our input, wah, which will auto-engage, our compressor for our clean tones only, three different amps. We have clean, a crunch, and a JP lead from 2023, the John Petrucci lead. We're running all of that into the same cab, Mesa Boogie 4x12 with an SM7 and a 121, and a medium room reverb running in parallel. So, the first thing to do when dialing in a lead boost, make sure that all of your scenes are at unity gain before you do that. How you can do this quickly and easily, Command L, the preset leveling tool. There is a video about that on this channel as well. We go more in depth there. For my clean scenes, I really like having a compressor to take those transients out and to bring up the overall level so that I can compete with the already compressed sounds of overdriven amps. You're going to want to tickle the red just get in there, know that the cleans will have more transients and will likely go over the red when brought to a unity gain with your more overdriven sounds. So make sure you have your pickups, your volume and tone knobs everywhere you're gonna have them for the majority and test your tones. <laughs> that will probably be a good one to start with. Then we have our crunch. The bass comes up a bit, but we're hovering right there. Then we have. Again, right around Unity, these were saved in my block library. Now we have all of those set to Unity gain. We can start with our lead boost approach. Right at the end of your preset. Save room. We're filling up on filters. Go to the drop down or potentially the quick build. Find a filter block and it will pull up completely stock settings, neutral, no level change, nothing. What we want to do, give ourselves a 3 dB boost. 3 decibels is perfect for a live scenario. You might think, well, that's not going to be enough. If you turn up more than that, you increase the chances that you will get turned down by the sound man during the solo. And that person is not going to turn you back up because it's a hazard. It's a potential flight risk. You might blow somebody's eardrums out if you're at 7 dB for your lead boost. Just a little nudge lets them know that you're soloing. Other people will hear you a little better. You'll cut through. They can massage that at the desk at front of house if they choose. And then it comes right back down. Nice and simple, but it gives you what you need and gets the job done. We could have this just turn on or off using the bypass switch, but we have far more control of that in our fractal devices. If you right click the bypass mode, you can assign a control switch. We're going to assign control switch one. When the control switch is off, we want the effect to be off. And when the control switch is turned on, we want our filter block engaged. It doesn't default to this, so you're going to need to change this ahead of time. So now we have our control switch assigned. We want to make sure that we have full control over this. But first, where is it turning on automatically and where is it staying off? 
when we first start a scene. Head to controllers, control switch per scene, default all of these to off, and then we're dealing with control switch one, and we can turn on or off per scene. We're gonna say we want this on for the big lead scene, which is scene three, but we want this off for our clean and our crunch tones. As we cycle through, we see that it now engages when we get to our third scene, but it will bypass when we're on the other two. And as if that weren't enough, we have the option to put this on a control switch on our foot controller and still be able to bring it in or out as we need to. Even more malleability and versatility. So as you can see on our FC edit, we have extra space here. You can assign a control switch to any of these open spaces, whether it's a tap or a hold function. We'll head to our FC per preset window. We'll assign this to the third button, the rightmost on the FM3. I always like color coding things as the effect or the block that they are mimicking. Just helps me see at a moment's notice. I'm gonna to go to category, control switch. We want this to be a latching switch. So when we click, it turns on, we can move our foot away and then disengage by clicking again. Then we are going to name this plus 3 dB boost. That will show up here on our FC controller. So now, when you're playing your clean scene, you can be strumming along. Boost your little lead line, and then go right back to strumming by tapping again. You can go do this with your crunch mode, but you can also turn it off in your lead mode. Say you're soloing and the vocalist starts singing at the end of your solo. You want to keep soloing or you have a continuing counter melody. You can turn that off. It will stay off until you either turn it back on or cycle back to that scene. This is absolutely perfect for live scenarios when you want to be able to push yourself up or down in a mix at a moment's notice without a sound man getting too upset with you and the audience can still hear you. That's it for lead boosting. If you enjoyed this video, there are plenty more videos throughout the channel. Fractal 101, tutorials of tone, gear reviews, playthroughs, etc. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.